So I was going through a bunch of old stuff the other day as I'm moving into my new room here. It's almost done. And I came across this DVD. It's called Mix It Like a Record, Unlock the Mysteries of Mixing with Mixer Producer Charles Dye. Now this is the first mixing lesson I ever bought. And as I was looking at this the other day, I realized there are things that I learned in this DVD like more than 15 years ago that I still use today that still impacts the way I work. And I wanna share those things with you. So when I started producing, YouTube was just a baby. You know, there were no online mixing tutorials or courses or anything like that. I, I remember I would read magazines. I was subscribed to Mix Magazine and EQ Magazine, but really the, the version of YouTube back then was the Gear Sluts Forum. It's now called Gear Space. But I remember interning at a big studio in Toronto and the head engineer and I, during downtime, we would literally just sit there, just scrolling through the gear slits forum for, for hours, just reading all of this advice and opinions about gear. And it's funny because it's just like YouTube is today. You know, I, I've definitely learned some valuable stuff from surfing that forum, and there were some legit real audio pros that hung out and posted on there, but that forum also led me down the rabbit hole so many times, contradicting advice from random people really got obsessed with things that didn't matter in the end and often left me more confused and stressed and this dvd it came out in 2005 it must have been more like 2007 when i got it but there was a ton of hype on the gear sluts forum about this dvd there were a bunch of threads hundreds of comments and it was clear that there was a huge hunger for this type of product, for this type of information and knowledge. And of course, there were plenty of haters who went on and just trashed the DVD and would trash Charles Dye for whatever reason they could find. So again, in both those respects, nothing has changed. But I ended up buying it and I remember thinking it was kind of expensive at the time for a DVD. You know, I think after shipping and exchange rate and everything, it was like, it was like a hundred bucks. I mean, imagine that, eh? Like having to having to order something and wait for a DVD to come in the mail. I think it was the first Stephen Slate drum library that I also had to order and receive on DVDs. So it arrived and I watched it in the basement of my parents' house on the, on the big screen TV. So I was just kind of watching it a few times, I think, soaking it all in. And I don't even remember the specifics of, you know, his EQ technique or compression techniques or things like that. But there were a few things about his workflow and the way he was thinking about it that really stuck with me. And until I came across this in the closet the other day, I, I had totally forgotten that this is where those things came from. And I still stick with it to this day. And the first one of those things was Charles talking about his effects template. So he had this Pro Tools file, this session that was loaded up with all of these aux input tracks that had a bunch of different delays and reverbs and effects that were, that were preset. And he would import that effects template into every song he mixed. And this was totally revolutionary to me. You know, I had never ever considered doing anything like this. I pretty much mixed every song from scratch and every time I wanted a reverb or delay, I would just be going through the plugin menu and trying a whole bunch of settings until I found something that I thought was good. So the idea of having a standard set of tracks and effects that you could use in every song was a total game changer but it was also what he had in that template. I believe there was a, a gated snare verb, a snare plate, uh, short reverb, long reverb, short, medium, long delays, and like a split harmonizer, kind of coarse doubler effect as well. So I watched that section really closely and I created my own mixing template that really mimicked his entire setup there. And over the years since then, of course, I've, I've swapped out some plugins, I've built on it a little bit, but the overall approach and the overall structure and even the effects that are included in that uh, set of effects tracks is largely the same. And I'm not 100% certain anymore, but I think that even the delay time settings that I use for my main go-to vocal delay and the settings I use for a split harmonizer effect are literally the exact same settings that I saw Charles use on the lesson. The other thing that really jumps out in my memory is how he used automation. You know, he talked about how he uses automation to bring the mix to life and how it really is the secret weapon of pro mixers that amateurs don't really consider. And seeing that changed my workflow forever. All of the little details as he's changing the balance throughout the song to enhance certain moments or bringing up the level on something to, to catch the listener's attention and then tucking it back into the mix. And he even used an automation on the EQ of the hi-hat where it got gradually brighter and brighter throughout the whole song. So by the, by the last course, it was a lot brighter 
but you didn't really notice a drastic change or anything, but just how it continued to build the energy and feeling of excitement in the track. And that was revolutionary to me. Like I had never considered doing anything like that. And from that moment on, it just opened up a whole new world of possibilities in my mind of what you could do in the mix. And ever since then, I've been doing a lot of automation in my mixes. It's, it's my favorite part of the entire process. And I really think that my mix does not sound fully professional until I've done the automation. The moral of the story is invest in yourself, invest in your knowledge and your growth. You know, when I got this DVD 15 years ago, I never imagined that a few years later, I would be working full time in my studio and producing bands that my friends and I used to listen to in high school. And I certainly never imagined that you know, all the way forward to today, I'd essentially be doing the same thing, you know, teaching people mixing online here on the YouTube channel or more in depth in my full programs. So with all of that considered, I got a absolutely massive ROI on this DVD. And we're so quick to spend our money on gear and tech gadgets and entertainment. I mean, you're watching this video right now on a device, either a phone or a laptop or a tablet. Now imagine that you dropped your phone in the toilet or you smashed this device on the ground today. Well, for most of us, isn't it true that we would have a replacement for that device in our hands probably within 24 hours no matter the cost. Yet at the same time, our default mode is to be so hesitant when it comes to spending money on acquiring knowledge. And we're told to invest huge chunks of our money for decades and decades into a 401k that we really don't understand and don't have any control over, hoping that it gets a five or 10% return, when in reality, spending even just $100 on the right set of books would give you the ideas and skills to increase your income exponentially. And I've been investing, and I really mean investing, not spending on books, coaches, courses, mentors, just as a way of life for many years now. And I promise I'm not exaggerating to say that some of those investments have gotten me a hundred X return. And I guess this is the one that started it all. And yes, free content online is great. You can learn a lot, but there's something different that happens when you commit with money because those who pay, pay attention. Now, I'm not sure if you can still buy this anywhere. Maybe you can buy a, a digital version. I don't know, look it up, drop a comment if you find it. Uh, if you do, it's probably worth checking out. And uh, check out this video next for another mixing tip that I learned that had a massive impact on my work.